So we go on to bring in a new manager, and it ends up being this man, Sicko Munoz, a name most Wednesday fans would like to forget in a hurry. Uh, and he came in, he brought in, so we brought in some players. We brought in Deji Gazama, Paul Valentine, Bernard, Delgado, Masaba, Bambo Diaby, um, Jeff Hendricks, David Faquez, Momo Diaby, Ashley Fletcher, all come in in that little window. And you're thinking, okay, let's see what you can do here. Let's see how he can improve it. And it doesn't go well with some of the players. One of the players he really throws out was uh, Marvin Johnson, for whatever reason. The press conference were re relate relentless with talking about it. And our first game of the season was a 2-1 loss to Southampton. We got a 1-1 draw in the Carabao Cup and we won on penalties. We got battered by Hull 4-2. Preston North End beat of 1-0. Cardiff beat of 2-1. We're in the... Uh, Cup again in August. This is the just as August. Manfield Town beat us 5 4 on penalties. Uh, League United 0 0. And we go into that international break on the 2nd of September there. And that's where I think we should have sacked Munoz because we weren't doing well. We hadn't won a game at that point. And you're thinking, we definitely need to get a game won and get something. But we just didn't look like a team that knew how to play together. It was just lethargic. It kept on thinking, it'll be coming, it'll be coming. And I would try to back the managers best you can, but even I, behind the scenes, was questioning bits of it. But I had said that you have to see what happened. The players are behind him, but it can't continue how it was. We lost to Ipswich 1-0. We got a draw versus Mid Middlesbrough. It's like, okay, can we build on that draw? Uh, Paul Valentine, first game for us as well. Then we lost to Swansea. We lost to Sunderland 3-0. We lost to West Brom. And then that is where Sisko got sacked. The loss to West Brom was the final straw for everything that happened with um, Sisko. His time was up. It was, it was done. Uh, it needed to be done a lot earlier, like I said. Uh, it just never happened. And of course, we go play Huddersfield Town, who at that point hire Darren Moore as their manager. So you had that really interesting, poetic twist where, okay, you've got our old manager who's done pretty well for us and now we need to uh, see what happens next. So during that international break, we are in talks with this man here who came on to be absolutely fantastic for us in this season, he really made a huge difference to how he played, the mental side of it, and just got up playing some, trying to get up playing some football again. Uh, but it didn't start great. And here's the interesting thing with this one. Danny Rule was the second choice out of Sicko. So he didn't have to do much trying to figure it out, kind of, kind of thing. And... He comes in and he knew it he knew it was a big job. He knew he had a big job to get things sorted. And we start to see the resemblance of what looked like trying to put a team to get behind the scenes. Against Watford, we had a lot of chances, didn't bury them, lost one nil. We went to Plymouth and uh lost that three nil. Turn the corner though, our derby game versus Rotherham. And this is when you start to see some really good stuff come in place. So let me make this photograph a little bit smaller for you all. You start to see in a coaching staff. Danny Roll brings in uh, Henrik Pedersen, who was already in a job. So we had to get him out of that. Sal Babo, Neil Thompson was already here. Uh, Chris Powell came in. Sasha Lenz uh, comes in as well. So it's starting to look like you're looking at a decent situation there where you're getting a good uh, first team into play. First team coaching staff to try and change things around. And you're thinking, okay, let's see what we can do. And I believe that's one of our analysts, uh, Rob Lee, um, kind of thing. 
And we are trying to turn things out. So he brings in the right people to try and make a change behind the scenes. So we get go to Rotherham. We win 2-0. You're thinking, right, what else can, can, we ch- can we change our fortunes here? We go to Bristol City. Lose 1-0. It wasn't great. We had a lot of that game and we looked decent in it at times. We go at, at home and Millwall get a new manager bounce with uh, Edwards. Are you thinking that would just, how could we just lose that how we did? And things were really needing to change and stuff because it hadn't really kicked up, but you could tell the system was there. They were there to work. Uh, we go to Birmingham City, 2-1, and that film felt like a blow if Wayne Rooney gets his first win. But the turning point in the entire of the season was against Leicester City, where we got a 1-1 with Jeff Henrik getting the goal to make it um, 1-1 in the dying embers of that game. We then go at home to Blackburn Rovers and get a cracking 3-1 win. Now, here's one of the big things that started to happen. Bailey Kadamartry was starting to come into the throat of the Sheffield Wednesday team. And there was a lot of talk about him needing to get a new contract because if we don't tie him down, he could go. Well, he signs a new contract and it's fantastic for us to do so because I think there we've got a lad that's really one for the future. Ironically, in the Talking Wednesday awards show, uh, none of us have picked him for one of the one for the future, which was interesting. We get a 1-0 win versus uh, Doak. We get a 1-0 win versus QPR. Uh, no, no, we didn't. We had a 2-1 win versus QPR, but I missed. We got beat 3-1 versus uh, Norwich City, and we just, we just got bad there. Beat QPR 2-1 there at home, which was good. And then we play Cardiff, and they beat us 2-1, and you're thinking, this ain't great. We need to really, really try and dig deep. We go to Coventry 2-0 on the 26th on Boxing Day. But then... We go to Preston North End and get a win, something I don't think anyone was expecting us to do because they were looking mid-table, looking decent, and trying to move things around. And you then go into uh, January, which was just an insane month for us because we play Hull City and we get a 3-1 win versus Hull. No one saw us getting the win versus Hull. Um we have to play Cardiff in the cup. We win 4 0. We get through to the next round. Um, we play Southampton, lose 4 0. And this is a bit where we start to have a little bit of an issue where we kept on playing teams who were in really good form. So, Southampton, fantastic. I think they were first in the form table. We then go play Coventry, second in the form table. And the Coventry game with Bard with. Um, Incidents off the pitch, uh, which we're not going to go into, but we, it's something we do not like to see. It should have been gone a long time ago. And the same at the Sunday the game, there's something there that happened, which I don't want to go into that either because it just doesn't look good on the club and those people who had done it got reprimanded and so they should do and they shouldn't be allowed anywhere near it. We do a Coventry back-to-back uh, as well because we have to play them in the FA Cup. We get a 1-1 draw. Watford... Is nil nil, but in that transfer window, we made some really good signings who ended up being crucial to our survival. Now we let Joe Byer go on loan to Blackpool. We let Backington go on loan to Car- Charlton. We bring in, we send Vaquez back to AC Milan. We bring in v- v- Jan Perveda from Leeds on a loan on the last day of the transfer window. And that was looking like it could have been a permanent uh, transfer at one point, but it wasn't to be. We also had Jeff Henricks in the in the summer transfer window and he went back in January as well. Uh, we bring in Ike Ugbo from Troyes, who we would love to get back and made a huge impact in how we played. Really got the goal for us in the back end of the season. We brought in James Beadle as well um, to come and change things out in net kind of thing. We brought in Bambo Diaby in the uh, summer and he started to step up a lot more that when we really thought we really needed him to. He really stepped up. But we brought in Van 
Jan, we brought in uh, Beadle, we brought in Ugbo, and we brought in Perveda. Would we want more? Of course we would have done. But that's what we were only able to get. And they came in and made a big difference to us uh, in terms of how we were just starting to play a little bit better. One of the results that I found hard to take was the Huddersfield Town result, where we looked to control that game and we were looking really good. And it's the first time you saw Danny get angry. He got angry. He got annoyed with this. And he was not a happy man with what has happened in that game at all. Apparently, there were half words said at the end of the game with players and some truth. We go play Coventry City and get battered 4-1. And it was two back-to-back, -back, eight goals letting. It's like, this is not what you want. But we get a 2-0 win versus Birmingham City, which is fantastic in February. We're trying to see if we can improve it a little bit. Uh, we lose to Leicester 2-0, which they were top of the table. I think there was always going to be the case we're going to lose that one. We beat Millwall 2-0, and Millwall fans weren't happy at this point because I think this was the game that got Edwards sacked. Uh, we beat Bristol City 2-1. And at this point, we're still in the relegation zone. We're not out of it. We're still, like, bottom of the relegation zone, hovering between Rotherham and uh, Wednesday, constantly. We hadn't got out of the relegation zone all season. And you're like, can we do it? But all teams around have kept on winning. We go into March and we get a 1-0 win versus Rotherham, which was just what we needed. We get a 1-0 win versus Argyle, another game that we needed. We lose to Leeds 2-0. And to be fair, Leeds looked good on the day, but we were starting to see like the bit of an injury problem with Perveda then. Perveda was starting to look, like there could be issues with him in terms of staying fit, which wasn't great. We got battered by it switch six nil, and this was just before an international break. And this is shows you how they do how well they've done it switch as well though. It switch eventually got promoted in this uh championship season to the Prem after I think it's 22 years of being out the top. And congratulations to them. They didn't spend a lot of money on signings. They were just very smart signings. And this is a bit where, I think after this game, I think we all thought, okay, that's it, we're done. We're probably going to be relegated now because it just doesn't seem like we're going to be able to get it back. We play Swansea. We needed all three points here. We only got a draw. Palmer getting the goal. And Palmer and Bannon hit some very big milestones in appearances for the club. Bannon 400. Uh, I think Palmer's only like eight away from getting someone else on the list of all-time um, appearances for the club. We lose to middle for 2-0. And it was a poor, poor, poor game. It was a really poor game. We didn't play well. They We looked so lethargic. And I've always said, if we play back-to-back -back games, we always struggle. Um, QPR, though. QPR were going on a real good thing. And they managed to properly pull themselves away from the relegation zone. And they managed to do that by changing their manager as well. They changed from Ainsworth and they started to move. But Windass... Uh, it wasn't Windaf, was it, on this one? I'm thinking the other one. But we managed to play some really good football in this game and get get the goals that really help us stay up. And we were just starting to do well. But Perveda, this is a game where Perveda actually came, came and had the issue with his hamstring again. It was a really good goal by Gasama, though. And then uh, we just kept on trying to get what we could and try and make it and we got it 2-0 and it was fantastic to see us run away with the points there but here's the thing also this was also a period in the middle of the season we had to suddenly change the sponsorship from a up because a up sponsorship had an issue with uh it was they were rebranding there were talks that they didn't get found out about the uh sponsorship and this goes down to more the off-field stuff having an issue. Like, there was a part, I think it was near October, where uh, Chancery said that we had a two million tax bill we needed to pay. And we hadn't paid it. And he th and it said, if the fans put in this much money, it can be paid. 
and there was a little bit of uproar. I I was annoyed by it. I made a very quite defiant video about it, but it rubbed people up the wrong way. We eventually got it paid, and the uh, embargo got lifted. But it was just this kind of, again. We got put in an embargo because money hadn't come to uh, Chancery. It money money supply had dried up somewhere, and it hadn't turned up. And that's not what you need. You need that little bit of stability. Uh, we get to a uh, Norwich City game where we needed something and we got something. They go 2-0 up quite easy, really easy game. We were really out of sorts. We made some changes in the um, half time. We made some big changes and we're trying to see if we can change it up and see what we can do. And it ended up being really good for us too, actually, because we managed to turn it around and make it 2-2. Two -two. And Smith got get it right at the end, which I'm so happy for Smith to get it. He's had a bit of an up and down season. We've not really been able to be in the squad uh, that much. And 2-2, two -two, you're thinking, right, should have really tried to play a bit better in that game, but it is what it is. We got a 1-1 one -one versus Stoke. And you're like... Stoke, Swansea, game, we should have been all three-pointers. They should have all been three-pointers, and we blew it. And at that point, you're thinking, are we just going to not get this sorted? Are we going to actually blow this right now? Uh, Palmer gets the goal in that, and then I think five minutes later, they go and go. But then we go and play Blackburn Rovers. We take 7,000 Sheffield Wednesday fans to this game. Um a mistake by their keeper gets it to Josh Windach. Josh Windach come back as well from an injury. He had been uh, wasn't able to play for little bits of it, but near the end, he became really crucial for us. Get the ball, gets it over the keeper's head. And you're thinking, that's a cracking goal. We then get a, another goal, a really good ball into the box. It's slotted in and we make it 2-1. And then they go an own goal and it was just comical keeper just didn't realize the ball ball was there went to try and do it tried to get it and they lose 3-1 uh modic got the goal for them and eventually they, they do stay up so that was one of the big games we needed to win that was one down thinking okay can we do it in the next one we got west brom west brom want to get into playoffs they need to secure their spot in the playoffs as well so we're thinking this is gonna be a really hard game we end up winning 3-0. And it was the last home game of the season. There was a big, big emphasis on people being at this game. Uh, Masaba got the goal, which was fantastic. Really good to get the rebound and make it 1-0. Uh, and you're just trying to see how we can do. And then Masaba looked for a penalty in the second half, doesn't get it. And then Ugbo just turns up gets his goal, makes it 2-0, and then Josh Windach gets his goal to make it 3-0 with taking the shirt off as well. And it's you start to have that thing. Are we actually going to be able to pull this off? Are Sheffield Wednesday Football Club going to be able to pull off what would have been seen as when Danny came in, a 13-point swing for us going down? We were 13 points away from it. Uh, and everybody had wrote us off. Everybody had us down by December, by Christmas. There's no way Sheffield Wednesday Football Club can get this back. There's just no way it's going to happen. Uh, we go to Sunderland and we get a 2-0 win. And it just shows you how much that belief is needed in this. It shows you how much belief helps you get things going and going in the right direction. And, of course, it's Liam Palmer and Josh Windath are the lads who get it. They try and make some things happen in the first half and you're tr in the second half to try and change it. And they did have a goal disallowed. And at that point, when that goal was disallowed, you were thinking, OK, what's going to happen here? And let's just look at the final table for where we were in the end. For most of the season, we were here, just l trying to get out of here and just failing constantly. Huddersfield went down. Birmingham went down. And here's the thing, everybody on the last game of the season won. 
in around us. Everybody won, which was something that went affected. Birmingham went down, and they've been a club that have been struggling for years. But we end up becoming in 20th place on 53 points. Three points away from Stoke, QPR, Sunderland, Watford. Four points away from Swansea. And um, six points away from Millwall. And if we had turned six of those draws into wins, it would have been even better. But Sheffield Wednesday managed to survive, to stay in the championship for another season. Now, the silly season is upon us with all the rumours and what's going on about players going who we're going to sign. Our retain list is not out yet. So we are waiting for the retain list to come out uh, to find out who's going to be here next uh, season. There's been a lot of talk about is Danny Rule going to be here. We found out recently Danny Rules has got a 5 million um, release clause. And if you want his staff and Danny, it's 10 million. And I think that's smart. The talks of him having a new contract being discussed, the talk that uh, he wants reassurance on how the club's going to go forward. He's been working 80-hour weeks. The ball is now in Chancery Court to make the most of the good feeling again and not go into a summer like we did last year where we had uncertainty. This summer, we need to have certainty and know where we're going to do and how we're going to go into the following season and have a proper pre-season under Danny Roll and work out where we go from here. Because if we can play how we did near the end of that season with some Danny Roll style of players, who knows what will happen. But thank you for watching the Sheffield Wednesday 23-24 season review. It had been a season and a half. It had been a roller coaster of a ride. I think this has probably been one of the most dreadful seasons I've covered of Wednesday. Um, I want to thank you, the audience, for watching uh, the videos all through the season. It's been incredible. It's been an incredible journey this season, and we stayed up. We did it. So let's go on to next season, build for the future, and hopefully that future's a Danny Rule future and we build and we keep going and the next thing I want to see hopefully from the club is that he's on a long long term deal but thank you for watching like share and subscribe but that have been Sheffield Wednesday's 23-24 season and we stayed up <laughs>